<clears throat> it's Friday, <clears throat> May 25th, 2022. I'm sitting here. Um, I'm so torn. I really, I am. Because, like, I watched, um, I'm watching CBS this morning. They're doing this blurb on Top Gun. I'm looking through a lens of everything the disgusting North Americans have withheld me from my entire life. Like, all the possibilities that I I would have desired had I not been intoxicated with toxins in the air and this disgusting whatever in New York. I mean, had entry been allowed into this, like, quiet league that doesn't exist here. Like, on a day-to-day -day basis, there's no entry point. Not through high school, not through elementary school, not through some kind of community leader, not through future leaders, into this word they use as an umbrella term, and I don't know who's holding the handle, but and I don't know what rain is coming down on it, but it is under a military verse. Um, they're admitting today on CBS This Morning that with the Top Gun and Aviation movie coming out, the second one, that they're using it to recruit. Well, isn't that lovely? I think that's a great idea for brandish and marketing. But where was the help when I needed it? And where has the help been? It's I have spent walking this earth over 500,000 days. Every day, each one of those people employed in something special had an opportunity to change my life forever and get me where I needed to be because there's a bigger existential problem going on with, like, Grand Sorcerer Supreme's blessing in a galaxy in one section of Vilag, and I'm in a broken uh, Fuja section. And they have the ability to come in and change everything just like that. But yet the help never arrives. And then I look at this, I look at how much fun they're having, like all, I mean, like it looks like a real hoot and it looks like task driven, instruction driven and what is needed for someone whose logos is like myself. I'm not one of these like freelance, figure it out, everything falls apart and it has. So I don't understand exactly what's going on, but today they acknowledge it here. And then there's a version of this in the Avengers, the end game, where all these world circles just open up and everybody comes running for one gigantic battle. That's what my whole life feels like at this point. You got nothing accomplished. Your biodiversity program took some precedent, you ruined the world, you poisoned the world, you racked up unlimited amounts of charges, and you've lost the importance of who actually matters in the system. Like, there's no key leaders. I mean, you lost me in all the administrations at this point. <clears throat> like, who to stand up for and who to rally for? I got nothing. I mean, there's been nothing given... And there's nothing to praise at this point. So they all come out for this one gigantic battle. They're all on the battlefield trying to do something. And yet climate change, global climate change, and energy crisis still hasn't even been addressed. In fact, they've been fostering and weaning some baby formula where they all get on the same playing field and everybody gets lost. So this is what it looks like. Oh, what they're trying to do for next generation, which you've missed me completely. Another song by Jane Jackson. Jackson. I'm all over. She's got moves. We like yeah, it. We like it. <laughs> Miss Miller. Yeah, you know what? But you're not. <clears throat> Glad you said it. Well, switching gears now. The long-awaited sequel to the 1986 blockbuster hit Top Gun opens when, folks? 
today. That's right. It's in theaters across the country. Top Gun Maverick sees Tom Cruise return to the role that helped make him a superstar. Well, the movie produced by Paramount Pictures, part of our parent company, Paramount Global, also inspired countless young men and women to sign up for the military. Our own Catherine Herod shows us how the impact of the original film and the partnership between the military and Hollywood producers helped send a new generation of pilots into the sky. What I don't understand is, like, there were prisoners taken, unbeknownst, in some civil-looking civics project. And what, Pentagon's gonna stand up and say that they didn't know? Uh, right. Aren't you guys in charge of, like, human safety? I mean, what is it that the Defense Department protects exactly? I'm just curious. To the military firepower. The 1986 film Top Gun became a touchstone for a generation. I still have a vivid memory of coming out of the theater. Jeff Gage was a junior in college when he first saw the movie in his hometown of Des Moines, Iowa, with his dad, a Navy veteran. My dad, he'd been thinking about what we'd just seen, and he, he looked at me and said, that would be pretty cool to do. Just like, luckiest kid from before my, my arrival in the world, as far as I'm concerned, to have a dad like that who knew how to guide you and where to go. This was my first deployment. Gage, who I've known since college, recently retired after 30 years of service as a naval officer, aviator, and yes, Top Gun instructor. How did the movie influence your decision? It absolutely was an influence in my decision to serve. And I would not want to discount probably the more important motivators of, you know, just the sense of patriotism and service to country. But yeah, absolutely. I think that I think the movie did influence a lot of it. Um, service to what country? Because I right before this, which I'll go back to before I do the battle scene in the Avengers, um, there was this blurb on Obama and how he had a whole family he invited into his oval into the oval office at the time he was there and there's some tie in with Uganda so i'm just curious how that what which country are you serving folks <laughs> While there's no hard data on the so-called Top Gun effect, the Navy told us the first movie sparked significant interest in naval aviation. Continuing, we think Top Gun Maverick should positively contribute to individual decisions to serve. So welcome to the Tech 2.x Red Air Brief. With Top Gun once again at the center of the entertainment world, the Navy released a video showcasing what life is like for real Top Gun. And when the military loses control due to too much biodiversity and not enough, like, participants actually watching over and caring for their own, but instead, like, just, and they lose control, how do the individuals that are being intoxicated by pollutants and all sorts of things who were waiting to participate for God and country is usually what they say, but the military lost control and doesn't even want to recognize it themselves in the way that their forces are growing and how it's affecting the populations that they left out. I'm RH negative. That is huge in the specific genetics category. Top Gun instructors and plans once again to set up recruiting tables outside theaters. This is me studying, which is what I did, you know, for hours a day. While Gage admits the original movie sacrificed a little authenticity for drama, his fellow Top Gun instructors still knew all the quotes by heart. All right, Dr. Gage. Okay, man, let's turn and turn. You can be my wingman anytime. Even if they tried to hide it. We would never, ever be found quoting it. And what happened if you quoted the movie? There would usually be, as I mentioned, good-natured ribbing, as well as the expectation of a $5 fine. You're at the intersection of Hollywood and the Pentagon. I am. 
Glenn Roberts runs the unofficial Hollywood headquarters here at the Pentagon. Facilitating Defense Department support for movies, TV shows, and documentaries. Something his office has been doing for nearly a hundred years. Have you ever put cameras inside a cockpit before? We have put GoPros in, but we've never put IMAX cameras in, and certainly not six in a single cockpit. So what was done here was just unheard of. Roberts told us the Navy provided two aircraft carriers and access to four bases for the filming of Top Gun Maverick. More importantly, we shared the experience of our, our skilled naval aviators who put the actors through the paces. All right, here we go. And really brought them to life in a cockpit. Good morning, aviators. Gage told us he's waiting to see the sequel with his entire family, including his son, who is now at flight school. I think the young aviators of today not only have the original Top Gun movie, obviously as a reference, but I suspect they'll have the Top Gun Maverick one as well. <laughs> Well, isn't that nice? Generation after generation gets straight in, head of the class, into, like, superhero's dream. Every mom wishes for their sons to be able to contribute to God and country. Well, just so you know, there's the rest of us who uh, were shaken out somehow and still need help in case, like, all this fun, like, Drive and fly is like, if you have any spare time, we could use some help. And the Navy doesn't offer up these resources for free. One report suggests that producers paid up to $11,000 an hour for the actors to ride in the Super Hornet. And the script had to cross a high bar to win over Pentagon approvals. Officials told us that they think this sequel has done a better job than the original, reflecting the true diversity of today's military. And back to the mm -hmm. ladies at the table. Aren't there laws against, like, false imprisonment and purposely sending people into someone's life path to derail them from success or to purposely shame them so they don't they're not able to pursue happiness at any gate i'm just curious because there's a lot i mean like i watched this coming attraction and like there's a part of me that's just like oh my god that's so amazing yay and then there's the other part of me that lives in the real world where i am the forgotten and i'm i'm just really angry that they're able to participate in such a manner, and yet they are so careless and frivolous with our carrier on the ground of the country they say that they're protecting. And so here's uh, Gail talking about some piece of history I missed completely because once they voted this guy in, I was just like, whatever on you people. Um, but... It's Obama, and this is the part where they actually tie in the Uganda, U.S., uh, U whatever, embassy. I don't know if it's U.N., U.S., nobody knows. Barack Obama. Catch whatever the, the machine board. says. We all remember this picture. Back in 2009, five years old he was at the time. Jacob Philadelphia is his name. He touched President Obama's hair. Do I love this picture. Yeah. During a visit to the Oval Office. Jacob wanted to know if the president's hair was like his, so Obama, President Obama, leaned down and said, go ahead, touch it, <laughs> touch it. It was an amazing moment. This little boy graduates from high school today. Uh, he goes to the Friday International School in Uganda. His father works for the U.S. Embassy. Recently, the two were reunited, President Obama and little Jacob, who's not so little anymore, <laughs> reunited to celebrate that I, I think the White House visit clearly uh, inspired you, I hope. Yeah, really, yeah. Are there really that many stories that need to be inspired? I'm just curious, because my kids never were invited to the White House. Never got to meet, like, I don't know, any of the presidents. So I'm just curious how this one goes. Yeah. That's fantastic. So the thing I'm confused about is how, how do you get to be this big man? Is that like a kind of a mustache, some facial hair you got there? Yeah, I'm growing it. Oh, Lord. It sounds like you're doing great, man. And I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on your graduation. Great talk to you. Tell your family that. Wait, 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 wait. And, and he's going to go. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Jacob is now 18. He plans to attend the University of Memphis. This is the thing about Jacob. He says at the time, 
He didn't know that this was such a big deal. He just thought of President Obama as his dad's boss. And he said what he remembers about that moment was being intimidated by the office and Barack Obama towering over him. He still seems a tad in a little bit. Yeah. Barack Obama was clearly engaging with yes. him, play with him. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably a little nervous. I'm just a tad. But congratulations. We're congratulations. So, happy. so proud of him. Well, my talk of the table is this it's a Florida woman who won't let her age slow her down. And now, in the Avengers The End Game, which has a date of 2019, it really feels like they're admitting, like, they've got this Gamora who's got a gun to the head of whatever this is, which is, at times, what I affiliate with or identify with. And then, at times, um, and then it goes into... Like, World War One and World War II, the gods were fighting. Thor's there, Captain America's there, a whole bunch of others in theoretical arguments that are a hypothetical, like, actuality somewhere. And then it goes into the battlefield where all these other circles just open up and outsteps every problem all at once. And that's like what my entire existence the last four decades feels like. That some Gamora's got a gun to my head keeping me here. And no idea where the gods are. They've been sending silent signals. And then there's some greater battle and it's, it looks like the battlefield's totally lost control. Nebula, listen to her. You can change. You won't let me. Is this at like weapons lab testing? I'm um, just because like the gods, I think that they get to like play around with that kind of stuff. Fighting over all the wrong things, I'm sure, if they knew that all those portals from everything non-essential were going to open up and start to come after all of them. I think this scene would probably have been written and played differently, but here we are.
And if you wait for a slight moment and I become this character and the military <laughs> becomes Thanos, like beating me over the head over and over and over as Captain America, like, like, no, I want to be proud. I just, I just don't see it. And it's just, I want, give me something to be proud of. And that like shows that you actually care. So this way I can stand up and like rah, rah for like some sense of, but I'm in New York and it's like, I mean, see how you broke the shield here? I mean, why? It's like one of your own. Aren't you supposed to protect it? Why are you fighting against it? There's going to be some portals that are going to open up and like a whole bunch of people are going to run through and then I've got a broken shield and now, I mean, like this is like real big stuff. Are you thinking straight? You got your arguments out there straight? I'm just, do we need to redirect, take a minute, like deep breath? Like, I mean, we were on the same team at some point, North America and something in the military. I don't know how we got discombobulated. Because <clears throat> that's how I feel every day, waking up and going to sleep in this place. It is so hard to control the motor functions right now, which is a byproduct of something that's going on here. It's, and it's intermittent. It is not consistent. I try to drink more water. I try to like go for a walk and exercise. I can't even jog at this point in order to diaphoresis to try to like exfoliate the toxins. And there's no nutritional value in the food. I mean, it's substance, but it's so chemically engineered and I don't I can't read the chemical labels. I'm not a chemical engineer. All I know is like the words don't look like natural organic materials they look like some synthetic process that is either some kind of neurotoxin some nerve gas but like in an enzyme form to reshape and redirect with a kinesthetic outside and avoid and i mean it's whatever here we are not like anybody gives a shit In all my years of conquest, violence, slaughter, was never personal. But I'll tell you now, what I'm about to do to your stubborn, annoying little planet. I'm gonna enjoy it. Very, very much. Look at that, they built some kind of process with the seedlings. America's shield is slightly broken. They're already in a deetered state. And then they're building some kind of flying mechanics and sending all sorts. They're unleashing collars off of ground source problems. I mean, it's just, it's so evident how it crept in. I just don't know where ground support is. I mean, are they only taking to the skies? Is that the only thing they care about? Because, like, there's some ground support needed.
your left. I heard somewhere they have this thing, like, never leave a man behind. I taught my kids that. One thing I got out of all the movies, like, you never leave one of your brothers behind. Never. Never, ever. You group together, you stay together, you never leave one behind. And they were raised that way. And then I watch this, and I'm like, all right, I guess nobody else shares that view. <coughs> That's what New York tends to look like, and look at all these circles letting out all of these New World Order issues. Oh my god, the next round of seedlings. Look at them all descending upon the most sacred of ground, where things are supposed to be battled out like warriors, you leave with your decency, respect, and answer, and everything is done. Instead, they're inviting every problem to that sacred battleground, and now nothing seems to have gotten fixed. In fact, it seems to have grown worse now that you've invited in and opened up portals in for what wasn't there before. And watch as the exponential, like, invisible terms. You can see all the exponents that, like, when they're on a balance sheet or they're in some quantum state, like, nobody really knows. They're like, no, it's just a number. Right, yeah, okay, but it is quantifiable and visual in certain irrational rationale. And you can see if these are the problems that weren't there and needed to be closed off like this lumen needed to be occluded for certain so all these problems didn't just walk in on your battlefield unexpected like right yeah because quantifiably even like sitting here I'm like four times an unlimited amount of possible like strategic like why would you set yourself up for that amount of carnage and breakage like that's like end of world kind of thing When you keep growing arguments and never put anything to bed or to rest, now the arguments have legs and lives of their own, and now you have this competing agenda system. And this is future, like now we're in the future, what was future is now here.
star 1978, star 8378. Um, it's May 27th, 2022, and it's Earth. Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is broken. And it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.